Hello students, this is Miss Harris, Biology 1 teacher at Cleveland Central High School. Today I will discuss the ATP-ADP cycle. We're going to cover Bio 2.1. We're going to use models to demonstrate that ATP and ADP are cycled within a cell as a means to transfer energy. Simply put, ATP is the energy currency of all cells. ATP is needed to do many cellular processes. Active transport is one of those things that require ATP. Notice this word is in bold print as we have previously discussed this type of transport. When the cell is trying to move something against the concentration gradient, that is what we call active transport. ATP is necessary for muscle contraction as well as cell signaling, which is used for communication within the cell. By the end of my presentation, you will be able to answer these three questions. What is ATP? How do we get ATP? How does ATP work? All living things require energy. Let's start with the autotrophs slash producers. Autotrophs are often called producers because they can make their own food. They're able to do this by taking in sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water through the process of photosynthesis in order to make glucose and other sugars. Examples include a variety of plants as well as certain bacteria, which also use this process in order to make food. It's important to note that producers are the foundation of any food chain or food web. Without autotrophs or producers, heterotrophs would not be able to survive. Heterotrophs are often called consumers because they cannot make their own food. Heterotrophs or consumers depend on other heterotrophs as a source of their food or to supply them with energy. Heterotrophs can break down the food molecules to convert their own form of energy. ATP is short for adenosine triphosphate. ATP has three components. ATP is made up of an adenine base, which we see here. It is also made up of a five carbon sugar called ribose, which is shown here, as well as three phosphate groups. One, two, three. These three phosphate groups, which can also be shown in the name itself, triphosphate, describes the number of phosphate groups in this molecule. We also have ADP, adenosine diphosphate. ADP is similar to ATP with the exception of the number of phosphate groups. So with ADP, you still have your adenine base, you still have the five carbon sugar, which is shown here, but you only have two phosphate groups. One, two. In the word, you can see the prefix di, which equals two, to describe the number of phosphates in this molecule of ADP. The ADP, ATP cycle is a repeated series of steps that never end. 
when we look at ADP, we see the components that make up ADP, but whenever there is an addition of another phosphate, ADP can be converted into ATP. ATP is often compared to a fully charged battery, whereas ADP is compared to a partially charged battery. Note that both of these molecules will provide some energy, but ATP will provide the most energy. Again, we see ATP along with our example of a fully charged battery, along with the components that make up this molecule. You have your three phosphate groups, you have your ribose, you have your adenine. The job of ATP is to store and release energy. ADP, adenosine diphosphate, we also have our partially charged battery along with the components that make up ADP here. We have our two phosphate groups, the ribose sugar and our adenine base. Energy can be stored by adding another phosphate group. This example that is shown here shows the cycle that never stops, where you have a continuous process of energy being released and the addition of another phosphate group that allows for energy to be stored. The ATP ADP cycle can be looked at more closely. We do have the components of ATP, but whenever the bond between the second and third phosphate is broken. So when this bond is broken, the phosphate gets removed and energy is released. When the energy is released, ACP turns into ADP. Whenever energy is released from the breakdown of molecules, another phosphate group is added. So ADP gets converted back into ATP. This is the cycle of ATP and ADP. All right, students, here is our lesson recap. Remember at any time you can pause the video or go back to find answers to, this, to the questions. ATP is introduced as an energy currency. What does ATP stand for? Number two, as a nucleotide derivative, ATP has three major components. List the three components. Number three, blank can be compared to a fully charged battery. And number four, blank can be compared to a partially charged battery. All right, students, let's go ahead and look at our answers. Number one, ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. Number two, the three components that make up ATP include a five carbon sugar, an adenine base, and three phosphate groups. Number three, ATP can be compared to a fully charged battery. And number four, ADP can be compared to a partially charged battery. Well, students, that is the end of my presentation. Thanks for listening.